Good morning guys, time check 6.12am, this is day 2 of our COVID journey. I say our, even though we have not been swabbed yet because my wife, um, my wife and I, we are one. We are one in this. Um, speaking of swabbing, the barangay health workers promised her last night that they will be coming here this morning to do the swabbing and the contact tracing. And there's a big possibility that after everything that that they will do here uh, they will be taking my wife away to a quarantine or isolation facility now, personally I would want her to to stay in a quarantine hotel or a quarantine pension house rather than the barangay isolation center because the past year I've seen how difficult it was for people to live there it's like you're sick and you'll get sick more I don't mind having to spend as long as um, she's comfortable and it will help her uh, get better quicker. I wasn't able to give an update yesterday on how is she. She's still isolated in the other room and she's doing okay. She, she has fever on and off. Um, she has cough from time to time. And that's it but she's okay and she also lost her sense of smell as for me I'm I still have my cough as of this morning it's not as prominent as yesterday I just hope that I'm getting better hopefully praying crossing my fingers so basically that's it um, my daughter is staying downstairs in a folding bed since she can't risk sleeping here in our room so that's it for now I will be doing updates as always throughout the day and um, just stay safe guys God bless you hi guys it's 9 46 a.m. and the barricade health worker said that they're on their way here already um, just say that I'm not questioning the Lord that this happened I just think that this is very unfair I know that life is not fair the world is not fair this has been very unfair ever since the pandemic started we've done everything to follow the health protocols to the point that we don't go out like we never go out until our offices ask us to report and we followed everything to the letter mask face shield just a fun fact do you know that one gallon of alcohol is just one and a half weeks more or less for us that's how much we use alcohol like every move we make it's always alcohol that's why I always buy a gallon and then refill our containers and then use alcohol and that's aside from the usual masks shields protocols and then this happened COVID hit us. Um, it's, it's really unfair. Because it, I see a lot of people treating COVID as not real. Like a lot of people are back to normal. And it's a wonder why they're not hit with COVID, why it's us. Well, I hope that everything turns out well. Kind of emotional because I miss my daughter she's just downstairs but we're not used to not hugging each other not being close to each other so I hope everything turns out well um, I 
I still believe God is good all the time. See you later, guys. Hi, guys. Time check, 11.10 a.m. Around 30 minutes ago, the team finally went here. The team was composed of the contact tracing team from the Cebu City government, I think, from DOH, who did our swabbing, the barangay health workers, who will monitor us um, like temperature everything and um, a representative from the ILG who did our interview so for the swab test they will give us our results in three to five days and again we'll take it from there actually it's like this since my wife is since right now it's just my wife who who's confirmed to be uh, COVID positive they interviewed her for contact tracing and for us here at home the rest of us we were swabbed it's not as painful and as com uncomfortable as uh, some said and then we will continue to isolate once we get our results in three to five days then we'll take it from there if knock on wood we don't have wood if knock on wood we will be positive or i'll be positive then they will come back here and do contact tracing for me now um my wife has to be pulled out within today so right now she's looking for um a cheaper uh, quarantine hotel or pension house or inn where she will be taken so once they've decided on it she will contact the EOC I think it's the emergency operations center and they will they will fetch her um, I think the EOC with the PNP they will come here to fetch her and take her to the isolation or quarantine center that she'll be staying in the next two weeks so it's a struggle it's it has been a few days but it's been a struggle for all of us here um, once she's pulled out and it will continue to be a struggle so i hope and pray that uh, the rest of us especially will not be covid positive because i don't want to go to an isolation center and leave my daughter here with, with her grandparents so still praying and hoping for the best and i'll continue to do updates within the day so this is day two of our journey see you guys Hi guys, time check, 2.24 p.m. Uh, my wife just got picked up um, by the people from the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center. And she will be taken to the isolation facility where she will stay for 14 or 15 uh, straight days. So that's two weeks. Um, as mentioned, we chose an accredited pension house rather than uh, the barangay isolation center which are public school classrooms so uh, this will be my last update for today um, I'm still having cough 
and I don't know if it's the heat or because uh, I cried a lot today that I have I feel that I have colds not really colds more of um, sip on we will continue praying that she will be well soon and that her health will not deteriorate also for us here um, also for us here left at home I hope that we will get better soon especially me and I hope that none of us uh, will be positive when we get the results three to five days from now so we're hoping that everything will be better not just for us but for everyone uh, out there watching this video so thanks for watching guys I will continue my updates tomorrow and God bless us all.